everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update. I hope that you're doing really fantastic and I'm here with the latest on the tropics. And so as we can see on this graphic straight away, we now have that X. So uh, what the NHC predicted from uh, several days ago has now come to fruition. There's that tropical wave, a brand new tropical wave off the African coast. So it is now marked and soon I believe it will be designated as an invest, which is an area of investigation being closely watched for development that's when more products become available for this the track guidance intensity guidance and even the high-res model data so we'll definitely have to keep watch on this one why because models continue that caribbean trend so most of the operational models are saying that this will enter the caribbean the latest update from the gf is showing a completely crazy scenario with this rapidly intensifying into a major hurricane i will say that it is not impossible but at the same time I do not believe that it will become such a strong hurricane. So we're going to be looking at what is expected as of the latest update from these different models. And we'll also be talking about what to expect across the Caribbean. So speaking of, let's go ahead and take a look at these satellite imagery. And here we can see that there is Nigel up there, Hurricane Nigel. Let's briefly talk about it. Let's zoom in here. And there we can see it um, well to the uh, east, northeast of Bermuda. There is Bermuda over there. There we can see that eye quite apparent on satellite right now. And uh, the system is going to continue to make its way further north in latitude where it will reach much more hostile conditions and will not be intensifying. So it will, it, it should start to weaken in trend as soon as today. So not going to be an issue for anyone up there, but current winds, CAT 2 status 100 miles per hour. And now we're taking a look at what is happening across the Caribbean. So we can see that there's quite a bit of activity in some spots. Looking uh, just in the vicinity of the Eastern Islands, we can see that there is some convection coming in from the main development region. So that is likely to result in some periods of showers and maybe even thunderstorms through today for some of our Eastern Islands. We'll look at the rainfall map in a moment. Heading further west over into the Western Caribbean, we can see some thunderstorms over there as well. And especially in the vicinity of Florida and the Bahamas, let's quickly drift up there. So so we've got the tail end of that frontal system and uh, that low pressure area which could develop into a subtropical cyclone is likely to form within the coming days but for now they were seeing all that thunderstorm activity impacting the Bahamas Florida and even sections of Cuba so this is what the a Euro model has to show as it relates to rainfall activity today and as the map becomes more colorful as we see more of those shades of yellows oranges reds that is indicating a lot more rainfall some substantial rainfall so sections of Florida again the Bahamas Cuba even the Cayman Islands and some spots in Jamaica could experience some heavy downpours at times through today and even in Central America now as we head to parts of northern South America especially most of Colombia Venezuela the Guyana's not as much rainfall activity unfortunately there could still be some activity popping up especially this afternoon with that daytime heating but nothing too crazy is expected and it gets even drier for the abc islands as there is not anything much to give you guys any substantial rainfall there but then there you can see that uh, from around guadalupe going through to the grenadines uh some substantial rainfall will be possible not saying that there's going to be some flooding or crazy rainfall happening there but the chance of some heavy downpours is certainly there and things get drier for most of the leeward islands Virgin Islands, maybe even parts of Puerto Rico, and head into the southern Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands. So that is what is on the horizon today, guys. Now let's go ahead and talk more about our disturbances starting out with our southeastern area. So there's a 30% chance of development, and uh, this has been stagnant for some time now. So again, that low pressure area could form off the southeast coast and drift up to the north, bringing impacts to portions of the southeastern states and mid Atlantic states as well, regardless of development development it is likely going to bring some inclement weather conditions to sections of the US and of course I'm going to keep you guys posted as it relates to that but now here is the main deal of this video we've got our disturbance off of Africa that brand new tropical wave and uh, here we're taking a close look at it so there we can see it on satellite nothing too impressive right now but that could change as we head into next week so 70% chance of seeing something develop this chance has been con uh, constant for some time now but through the next two days it has risen from 0 to 10% so slight increase there and let's now quickly go ahead and take a look at some model data and we're kickstarting things 
with the GFS. Now, as I mentioned earlier, GFS is showing a completely crazy scenario with this system here. This is as we head to next Wednesday, the 27th of the month, approaching the final few days of September. And we can see that tropical storm, well, hurricane, there's a pressure of 974 millibars. So that is likely a Cat 1 hurricane, potentially Cat 2, that the GFS is expecting to be just east of Islands of the Lesser Antilles. Let me tell you guys, this is a prediction. It doesn't mean that it will come true and other models are definitely not showing something that strong being to the east of the Lesser Antilles. They're showing something weaker, but that could still do some damage. We'll go on to them shortly. Heading into Saturday of next week, the 30th of the month, final day of September, and GFS is actually showing something else developing out there, another tropical cyclone forming, potentially a hurricane based on that 984 millibar pressure. By this time here, the model is showing a system with a pressure of 916 millibars just in the vicinity of Jamaica. Headed to Tuesday the following week, so we're going pretty far out in time now. Tuesday the 3rd of October, look at this, a pressure of 926 millibars. Look at how densely packed those isobars, those black lines are in that circular manner indicating that very strong hurricane, a potent cat Five hurricane expected. I'm not expecting something like this. I definitely think that we might have something develop and head into the Caribbean, but in terms of a Cat 5, conditions would have to be very, very conducive to allow for that to happen. And one thing is, the ocean heat content is definitely there. Those very warm waters have not been tapped into by any major system. So I mean, it isn't impossible to see even a major hurricane in the Caribbean. So we'll definitely have to wait and see what is ahead. But uh, the key thing here is that other models are definitely not showing something that strong. Euro model. Euro has been shifting further west. Initially, it was taking the system out to sea sooner rather than later. But now as we head to next Wednesday, there we can see the system approaching. Big contrast to GFS, by the way, not expecting a developed, organized cyclone. Now there are definite low pressure area with some moisture, but not a defined cyclone. And then it gets pulled up to the north by that frontal system as we head to Saturday of next week. The Canadian model is another one that was showing the system turning out to sea, but has hopped onto that westward trend and is uh, and is even showing that something else could try to develop. The Icon model has also been showing that we'll go on to it in a moment, but there you can see the Canadian model expecting that we won't have something defined either uh, approaching the Caribbean, not showing much development of it, but what it does show is the system making its way across the northern islands and then even approaching as a weak system, that would make it even weaker, all that land interaction, especially with islands such as Puerto Rico and Hispaniola. So the terrain of those areas will likely impact the system in such case. Finally, we've got the Icon model. The Icon does not go very far out, but up to Wednesday of next week, it is showing a tropical storm approaching the Caribbean islands. So here we have it, guys. This is a continuous trend that has recently uh, been seen with these models. And all models are showing that, okay, it's not gonna be moving west. It will be curving out to sea. And then they're all suddenly shifting back on this. So so there can still be changes over the coming days, guys, but I do think that the Caribbean should be on watch. I'm not saying, okay, you should be preparing for a Cat 1 hurricane or a Cat 2 hurricane, but it is certainly a possible scenario that the region could be impacted as we head into next week. And here we have uh, the general areas where the models are expecting that our system could go. All of them shift in a bit more to the west toward the Caribbean. So uh, I'll definitely be keeping you guys posted on it. And uh, that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this update. And so I hope you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions as usual, please do leave them in the comments. I will respond to you once I get the chance to do so. And as always, remember to be with us.